Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Haste Hobby's Cthulhu Death May Die painting series. Today we will be painting the cultists. Let's begin. After prepping and washing the figures as outlined in episode 1, I will be applying three colors of primer to create a warm gradient on the figures that we will exploit with transparent red paint to achieve a robe of varied color value. My reference for this is the paint job posted for these cultists on the Kickstarter page. I'm using three Badger Steinel Res primers, red brown, neutral yellow, and white to build up a gradient. I spray red brown in all the nooks and crannies and from below. I apply the neutral yellow on the upper half of the figures. And finally, white applied from above on the top third of the figure. Also, to save time, I'm priming several other figures from Death May Die, including Hastra's Disciples. It took me about a minute and a half per color per model. So for the cultists, that's about 36 minutes to prime them. Some of that time was me struggling through some partial clogs and flow problems. That said, airbrushing three colors on takes markedly longer than spray priming the minis. Next, I'm applying Contrast Blood Angels Red on the robes. I'm using a small brush to prevent too much paint from pooling on the flat surfaces of the robe. I'm doing this to prevent tide marks or streak marks. But later on, I tried a larger brush, and with this particular red, I didn't get any tide marks or streaks. And the larger brush was faster. You can see the value of the red is darker toward the bottom of the robe and brighter toward the top. That's our underpainting at work. However, if you did spray prime this model, you could get a similar effect by blending a darker red uh, with a brighter red, applying the darker red further toward the bottom of the robe and the brighter red toward the top. Next, I'm using contrast snake bite leather for the boots and wrist cuffs but these details are small enough that any brown would do. For the exposed hands and face, I use a variety of flesh tones. Mostly Gulamon flesh, the contrast paint. Uh, the literate cultists have a throwover, and I'm using Contrast Skeleton Horde for the throwover and for the pages of the books that they're holding. Speaking of Skeleton Horde, according to Gaming Geek's test video, when he compared contrast paints to Army Painter washes and other paints, Skeleton Horde is identical to Seraphim Sepia. So if you do want to get this color, save on some cash and get Seraphim Sepia instead of Skeleton Horde. And thanks for those tests, Gaming Geek. For the arcane symbols the cultists wear, I'm using a silver metallic paint. And I'm attempting to apply it just to the raised areas of the symbols, leaving the recesses dark. I do this by painting with the side of the brush, or at least I have some limited success with it. Because I filled in some of the arcane symbols entirely with the silver paint, I wanted to darken the recesses again to bring back the definition of the shapes of the symbols. So I applied some gloss Nuln Oil, a black wash with metallic bits in it. Uh, this too wasn't exactly what I was hoping for, um, but I was getting diminishing returns on the time investment here and decided to move on. For the cover of the book, I decided to do something uh, Cthulhu-y and uh, paint them bright green. So I'm using Contrast Warp Lightning. For the pages themselves, I looked up some Lovecraftian symbols, I think from the Chaosium RPG and it used a fine detail brush to freehand some of those symbols onto the pages. 
this I'm using a uh, thinned down brown because a black would look much too stark on the beige, beige pages. Uh, these books ought to look ancient and faded. I give the base a couple coats of black and the cultists are finished. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. You'll find a list of the products I used in the description of the video below. And tune in again soon as we continue painting minis from Cthulhu Death May Die.